All right, let's look at how to read a candlestick chart, aka a Japanese candlestick chart, which is the most common chart used to trade stocks, forex pairs, uh, crypto, and everything in between. At a first glance, it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually very easy. So the first thing we look at is the pair that we are trading. So in this case, we have US dollar versus Japanese yen. And we see on the side here a particular price point. Um, this number here is exactly how many yen you need to buy one US dollar, right? So as it stands right now, um, the price is 140 yen, 40.10 for every US dollar. Okay, now the next thing that we look at is we're looking at three things and I'm going to write them on the chart here uh, with a text. So number one, we look at trend. Number two, we look at support and resistance levels, support and resistance. So this is two. And number three, we look at price action, which is actually the candles individually. Okay, this is number three. Of course, I forgot to put the number in. Number three, so one, trend, two, support and resistance, three, I put them up here so they have space to draw. Support and resistance and three price action or, <clears throat> sorry, candles. Okay, trend. What is a trend? Well, it's the general direction in which the market is going. In this case, it's a downtrend because the market is going down, right? A downtrend. Uh, support and resistance, what are those levels? Well, those levels are the areas which stop the price from going further down or going further up. For example, this would be a resistance area and this would be a support area. All right. Now you notice that I didn't draw a line uh, as I did in the case of, of the trend. And the reason why that is, is because not every trader is going to see the same exact level as a resistance and not every trader is going to see the same exact price point as a support. So these will be, it's better to draw them a little bit wider to include all the potential traders in the market. Okay. So support and resistance. And then of course we have individual candles such as let's say these two candles well i put a lot more but it's these two particular the up one and the down one that we're going to look at okay so um we're going to look at it this in a in a moment but for now so trend going down very clear very easy you can see that Support level and resistance level, we have to look at those individually. Support, again, doesn't allow the price to go higher. It stops it from going higher, pushes it back down. Uh, we're going to, let me put some tags here for these. So remember, this is a support area right here. Uh, sorry, this is a resistance area. This is the support area right here support so the lower area is support because it supports the market doesn't let it go higher the higher area is resistance because it resists the movement of the price it doesn't uh, let it go higher okay very good now why do these areas occur well it's because at this point here and I'm going to make a another follow-up video on specifically support and resistance but for now the reason why this happens is because buyers are interested at this level and they enter the market they buy and they push the price up sellers are interested in this at this area the price is high enough they want to sell they want to exit the market so they're going to start to sell when they do that the price goes down 
and on and on the process repeats over and over with buyers entering and sellers entering and so on and so forth okay now eventually these levels get broken as you can see here so from a resistance level the price pushed down the, the sellers entered here a lot of them because you can see the price move down of course obviously red candle means uh, a drop in price green candle means a rise in price all right so sellers entered here they pushed the market down so low they actually broke this support area and then when the price comes back to it now it's no longer a support area so we're gonna separate this Let's make a, a separation line here because it was a support area before, but now it's actually a resistance area at this point. So support turns into resistance and resistance turns into support as the market moves on and on and on, okay? So it was supporting the market here, but then it, after this cross, it becomes a resistance okay the price move lower and lower okay very good now uh, so we went over trend this is a downtrend we went over support and resistance we know why this happens now we're gonna go to price action which means the actual candles let's go and look at them in detail to see what they mean because they're actually quite helpful um, as well to know what each individual candle means. So we're gonna take this green candle and look at it individually. So what does this mean? We have four levels here. We have opening price. Uh, how do I bring this to front? Can I do that? Style visibility. I'm not sure how to bring it to front. Hopefully it's clear enough. This is a the opening level. This is the closing level. Let me put it here. This is clear actually. So we're going to say opening level where the candle starts. This is open, hope it's clear enough, open. This is gonna be close, closing price, closing level. And then we have two more levels. One of them is the high point. Don't mind these lines, they don't need to actually be super straight. Let's hopefully you get the point. And this is the Okay, let me drag it also all the way to here. So this will be the low point. So the lowest point is represented by this wick here. You see it's a little bit lower. The highest point is represented by the higher wick. The candle, the high point. Okay the high point don't confuse with the closing point which is the body of the candle so opening close opening point in a green candle is lower than the closing point because green candle means a rise in price in the interval of four hours remember each candle is four hours in this case you can change it to one hour one day whatever time frame you want to work on in this case it's four hours okay now the opposite is true for the red candle. So let's see if we can highlight this red candle here. Again, hopefully it's clear enough. I do not mean this candle, I mean this particular candle, okay? So let's see what we have in this case. It's not very clear. I'm gonna have to zoom in a bit more. Make it longer. Again, the opposite, we have opening price. We have closing price. We have high point. And we have 
low point, the lowest point. Okay, now I'm going to try and write that point here so it's even more clear. Since it's a red candle, it opens higher and closes lower, right? So opening point, then we have uh, closing point, which is here, right? I'm just going to write it here. Closing point, right on this one. We have lowest point of the interval and we have highest point right here. Accurate. Uh, let me see if I can drag these ones more accurately as well. Yes, that's enough. Okay. So, green candle opens lower, closes higher, fluctuations in the meantime. The highest point it's been in that interval, the, the lowest point. Red candle, the opening point, the opening price is higher than the closing point. And these are the fluctuations, the highest point it's been and the lowest. Okay? Now hopefully this is clear enough. Now remember I'm going to make further videos on each particular, uh, you know, on the trend, on the support and resistance, on price action. But for now, these are the basics. Quick recap, each candle represents a particular time interval. We look at the trend first, if it's up or down, we look at support and resistance. Support doesn't allow the price to go higher, sorry, resistance doesn't allow the price to go higher, support doesn't allow it to go lower. Once it gets broken, it becomes the opposite. So a support that's been broken becomes a resistance and so on and so on. And the market goes on and draws these areas over and over again. You can use these to make informed decisions to take your trades. You're going to use the trend to establish the general direction of your trade. You don't want to trade against the trend usually. You're going to use support and resistance to time your entry. So for example, if you want to sell, you're going to sell at a resistance. And if you want to buy, you're going to buy at a support level usually. And you're going to use price action, which is these candles that I explained here with the entry and all that. Um, you're going to use that to get a more accurate entry. 